before the France tour, we were requested to pay a significant amount. Um, at that point, in my mind, it was it was too much, and I'd seriously considered retiring. And I, I wasn't shy about mentioning other coaches, and I felt I was able to be open with them and say, "This is this is where I draw the line in the sand, and if we're going to have to pay those costs, I'm out." And it was it was really hard for me because at that point, I was training in the gym. It was a Friday night. I was by myself. And I was really questioning, like, what am I doing this for? And why am I doing this? And I, I knew why, for the love of the game, the World Cups, and all the camaraderie and everything that rugby is for me, but at what cost? And it was a really sad moment for me. Canada's most capped player in history is the last person to complain. But the pay-to-play system of the women's national rugby team almost forced Gillian Florence into retirement after 16 years with the program. I want people to be aware of, of the sacrifices I make and the amount of money I put into it, but at the same time it's a bit, it's a bit embarrassing because here I am <clears throat> sort of stage of my life and yeah, I, I don't even want to count up the dollars from the years. My mom always told me, you know, how oh, you should look back and you really calculate, oh, it's, what's the point? Like it's, I, it's not why I do it, but at the same time it's sort of, all right, it's kicking the teeth and, but you just, grin and bear it and take it and at some point how long how much longer do you grin and bear it you know it's me and Nathan. it was too much for the team to bear and it hit its breaking point when a tour to new zealand was cancelled because of money issues just four months before the world cup for the past three years the players have had to pay thousands of their own dollars for everything from travel costs down to their kit but Canada's rugby community has stepped up to help the program shoulder the financial burden, and the team could not be more grateful. You have to understand strengths. Marlene Donaldson explains how the community's fundraising efforts have brought back the simplicity that can sometimes be lost amidst the politics and dollar signs of sport. I think to some degree it's true. I think we play this sport because we're passionate about the sport. And when you're focusing on external things like money and finances, and we're not playing the sport because we're getting paid, we're playing the sport because we love it. So when pressures from external pressures of not having enough money to play something that we love come into into effect, I think it really does take away from it because then we take we go away from what why we started playing the sport in the first place, and we focus on things that really have nothing to do with you know what we're training for and what this is all about. Um, and thankfully, um, you know, sometimes I think we feel like when we're in those situations and we're feeling that stress, we think we're the only ones that really care about what, what's going on. And when in that weekend when we were able to, when, you know, the community was able to put together that money, all of a sudden it said to us, no, you know, there are other people outside of our group, our family, of, of our team that, that care about what we're doing and believe in what we're capable of doing. And I think that sort of allowed us to refocus on what this year is all about for us and what this last four years has been about for us. So, um, um, I mean, we're, we're really appreciative of what, of what came out of that. Over the course of a weekend, the provincial unions and the Rugby Canada Board of Directors donated over $150,000 to the program, significantly lowering the costs for the players. The team is currently in a domestic training camp and although it's not New Zealand, any opportunity for this squad to train together is crucial. Despite the weather and a lack of international opposition, the team has been resourceful, even scrumming against a men's side. Canada has only one more event, a two-game series against the familiar US in June, before the World Cup in August. Dave Robertson, headmaster of Shawnigan Lake School, has graciously donated the use of his school's facilities at no cost for the camp in June. Brooke Hilditch says that on a personal level, the support has made her proud to be Canadian. Personally, I, it just makes me feel how, uh, how gracious I am that there's such a huge rugby community in this country and how lucky we are to have uh, supporters from province across the country. It's just amazing. And on a team level, the community's investment adds confidence, not pressure. I don't think pressure, I think more um, support. I wouldn't say that it's a, it's a pressure thing, it's more just feeling that people are supportive and behind me that it makes me more motivated to perform. Anna Schnell says that thanks to the donations, the pressure is off the players financially so they can concentrate wholly on preparing for the World Cup. It is really nice because it does allow us to focus on what we need to focus on. It, you know, you don't have to work that extra shift. You don't have to think about how am I going to scrape together enough to get to training. 
it's really nice to know that people are thinking about us and want us to succeed and that's just really something that I think is really going to help us win the World Cup. From the top down, this program is full of great people, not just talented rugby players. Until the recent financial boost, this self-funded team thought they were playing mostly for each other. But come the World Cup, the Canadian rugby community has shown the girls are being backed by their entire nation. And the girls? They've been completely blown away by the gesture. Just thank you. Thank you so much. Um, being in our position, it's... Uh, we play a lot for each other, and it's really nice to know that others are behind us too. Thank, thank you. you! We'd like to thank the rugby community for their support, especially Rugby Ontario, for supporting us on the road to the World Cup. Thanks! Thanks! Thank you! <laughs> thank, you. Thank, thank you very much! Thank you! Merci beaucoup! Bonjour, j'aimerais remercier la Fédération de rugby du Québec pour votre support. On apprécie beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. We would like to thank the rugby community, especially, especially BC. Thanks very much, everybody. Really appreciate it. Thanks very much. Great to have all the support. Thank you. Thank you to the Rugby Alberta Union for all your support over the last couple of years. Thank you very much. It really means a lot. Thank you to all the Atlantic provinces for all your support. Thank you, Canada! Merci beaucoup! Merci beaucoup!